always enjoy for some reason Tozer. He's just seems to have a word that aptly spoken seems to fit my life and my circumstances. And I could imagine him and God sitting around talking about what the Lord would share through Tozer at some point in time, you know, to me and to you and to the world as he shared while he was living on it, all the things that God put upon his heart. And he was faithful to do it, you know, it wasn't that he had an enormous amount of fame or fortune in his world or in his life, but that he was faithful to do what God told him to do at the time that he was told to do it. And a lot of times I think people mistake what God wants with what people do, because Jesus said that it's not the big thing sometimes that God is looking at, but the faithfulness of the person to be, to do, and to accomplish what he wants for them in the little things at the moment that he said to do them. To give you an example, God is more interested in the person today who would be willing to, say, clean a bathroom toilet and just go and do it because God said to do it, not recognizing that maybe down the road somebody else is going to enjoy a clean and sparkling bathroom and notice it and give thanks to God for it in some way and God wanted you to be the one to clean it and nobody will know except you and God. But we don't think of it that way. We don't think that that person is faithful. We say, oh, look at that pastor of a mega church. Oh, look at that tele-evangelist. Oh, look at that rock star who's got all the Christian awards and all the obvious knowledge of God in him that he must be a super saint. No. According to what Jesus said, the pastor has his reward. The rock star, your Christian idol, has his reward. Because you see, it's not just to be seen of men with the wrong attitude that God said you have a reward, but when you are seen of men, then you do have your reward. Chris Rice, as I recall, pretty sure it was Chris Rice, made an interesting statement. He said, you know, we singers get away with murder. Literally, he said, with being considered greater than what we are. He didn't say murder. He said, people look at us and they assume that we know all this stuff because we sing about it. They assume that we are some kind of like super saint or somehow super knowledgeable. And he says, we're not. He says, we're inspired, but we're not super saints. We're just human beings that God uses for a short period of time, and then it's over. He's done with us. He sets us aside. That, I think, is the failure a lot of times of people to recognize that what's more important to God is your faithfulness than it is your fortune or fame. Because fame and fortune are of the world. But the faithfulness of a saint is of God. And so God looks at you in whatever you do, if you've done it faithfully to him, and he's the one who told you to do it. He lifts you up and exalts you in due time over those whom the world sees as a standard of their righteousness or their exaltation. The reality is God looks on the heart and he sees behind the scenes what you do. More often than not, I have seen many people who walk off the stage of the fame and behind the scenes are not the saints that they look like when they're in front of the camera or the people or the reality of who they are. But they're still learning too, and it just happens to be that their talent or ability is what they chose to express their faith in. But what is our faith is how we live our lives with God, not for God. When we live with God, then we are of God and we become like God. But when we are for God, then it's just a religious expression. In Tozer, True believers do not shy away from obedience. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Romans 6.22 
it has been quite overlooked in recent times that the faith of Jesus is an absolute arbiter or absolutely what is required. It takes the place of the redeemed personality and seizes upon the person to the exclusion of all other claims. Nothing else has priority except for Jesus. Or more accurately, it makes every legitimate claim on the Christian's personal life and conditional life without hesitation and decides the place each claim shall have in the total scheme of his world. In other words, the Christian life is one of total dedication to Jesus in everything, and if it's not in anything, or only some things, then it's nothing. The act of commitment to Jesus in salvation releases the believing person from the penalty of sin, but it does not release him from the obligation to obey the words of Jesus. What Jesus said, he meant, and what he meant, he said, was what to do. And even as he said to do it, we must do as Jesus said. Rather, it brings him under the joyous necessity to obey. His words are not grievous, they're easy to do, but we resist them at first until we see it through. Look at the epistles of the New Testament and notice how largely they are given over to what is erroneously called new word, hortatory matter. By dividing the epistles into doctrinal and hortatory passages, we have relieved ourselves of any necessity to obey. In other words, well, let's just keep going. The doctrinal passages require from us nothing except that we believe them. The so-called hortatory passages are harmless enough from, for the very word by which they are described declares them to be words of advice and encouragement rather than commandments to be obeyed. This is a palpable error. The point being made is that if it's the word of God being made manifest to, being shown to us in the Bible, what God does is takes the scripture and applies it to us by his spirit and the spirit of God in you so that it fits your circumstances. And because it fits your circumstances, then it is what is required to do. It's not something that we say, oh, well, I think I'll do it, or maybe I'll do it, or I feel like doing it, or, you know, if there's an open door, I'll do it. No, it's what God says to you as you read it. Do you feel convicted of it? Do you feel as though it fit you? Do you feel as though it is something you should do? then you know that God spoke to you. And that's what makes the Word of God the reality of God speaking to you rather than just the scriptures written and set aside as some high idea to look at. The exhortations in the epistle are to be understood as apostolic injunctions carrying the weight of the mandatory charges from the head of the church. In other words, they're what Jesus said to do. All the epistles. They are intended all the Word of God. They are intended to be obeyed, not accepted or rejected as we will. If we would have God's blessing upon us, we must begin to obey. As you take each step, step by step, doing what Jesus said, then it becomes simple because as you go step by step, it becomes easier and easier. When you hesitate or pull back or step aside or step to the left or say, well, I don't think I need to do that, then it becomes less easy. So the easiest thing that a child learns to do is to obey. It's when they question it that they find themselves in trouble. Isn't it true with you? Have not your children, like when they obeyed, was simple and they learned along the way and you did what's best for them? The same is true of your father as he gives you the word of God daily to instruct you in what is going to happen today. He has prepared your life so that you could be instructed and he knows what's going to happen today so he can tell you how to avoid them or to learn from them if you have to go through them. So literally, just like the old joke is, just follow the instructions. <laughs> just do what you're told. When you're listening to, say, a GPS or some other person who has gone a certain way and they're giving you instructions of how to find something, you don't suddenly say, well, I think I'll interpret the instructions and go some other way. You won't find your destination. But if you are following the instructions to get to some destination, then you go the way the instructions say. Otherwise, you might find yourself someplace you never intended to be at the end of your destination. And I pray that's not for you, because where God wants you is where he is.